Let's go ahead and bring in Fox News contributor, host of the Steve Hilton Show, Steve Hilton, along with host, uh, the host of the Dana, Dana Show, Dana Lesh. Great to have both of you with us. Steve, let's go ahead and start with you. When it comes to what's happening right now, first of all, it seemed like Kamala was like thrust into this. She seems very overwhelmed. As she's kind of settling into it, it also seems that they want to distance her as far away as they possibly can from Joe Biden. But she is a part of that administration, and she needs to be accountable for that record, too. Of course, and she, she's the one that's going on about being a prosecutor. I want to have, I've got something to say about that as well and her record here in California. But the, the thing is about Kamala Harris that is important for everyone to understand is that she is exactly like Joe Biden in the sense that not just the record of the administration where they, they, they love calling it the Biden-Harris administration when it suited them, um, not just the fact that they share that terrible record on the border and everything else, but the fact that this person, Kamala Harris, just like Joe Biden, is a completely empty machine politician with no convictions of her own all she does, just like Joe Biden, is go with the flow in the Democratic Party. Whatever suits her in terms of her personal ambition, that is what she will do. That is what she will say, just like Joe Biden. And right now, in the Democratic Party, the people with the power are the far-left activists. And that's why the real attack that needs to be mounted on Kamala Harris is just right now, just within days of her taking over, as it were, she's signing up to all these far left positions. I and mean, we are on the business channel here. We need to let everyone know mm. that she's signed up now to raise corporate taxes to 35 percent. <laughs> I mean, on and on. She is a far left candidate. And back in California, she is associated with one of the worst things that has led to all the scenes of crime and chaos and homelessness and drug addiction on the streets of California. Yeah. Proposition 47 passed when she was attorney general. She pushed it through. That is her record as well. She is California, Kamala. That's what we need to make clear. And Dana, it feels like, yes, all those Biden failures have her, her, her fingerprints, excuse me, all over them as well. But to Steve's point, it's like Biden, but worse. It's Biden, but further left. Mm. She was tugging Biden that direction, as were other people in that White House. If it's just her unshackled, I mean, look at what she embraced when she ran for president unsuccessfully in 2019. Hard, hard left stuff. I think this is a really good point, Guy. And, you know, she was absent presiding over the Senate when Netanyahu spoke today as well, which further showcases just how far left the party has shifted. And it's important because this is really kind of a passing of the torch for the Democrat Party. I mean, I think Biden maybe if, if was a really bad remnant, but he nonetheless, he was a remnant of some of the at least old school, optically old school policies that the Democrats held. But with Kamala Harris, I mean, it, this is the squad's party now. This is the Bernie Sanders party. This is the very far left, high corporate tax rate, bad energy policy, bad foreign policy, Democrat party that's wildly different from the one that used to at least be somewhat successful at attracting moderates even six years ago. Mm -hmm. And another interesting point about this, I'm, I'm really shocked in a way at how unbelievably unprepared Democrats are for this moment. I mean, it's not as though that they, they were unaware of, of, of how badly Joe Biden was dealing with all of this, but the fact that they have common Kamala Harris out, but no VP yet. And it seems like not only are they trying to distance her from Joe Biden, but Gavin Newsom and Mark Kelly and Shapiro and Bashir and all of these other, they don't really have a big bench and it doesn't really seem like they want to sacrifice anyone that they could use in 2028 exactly. to saddle up with her. No one wants to jump, up, jump on that landmine. That's it. If you think you have a political future, Dana, you do not want to hitch on to this wagon. But while I have both of you, let's move to this because it was just last week that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris called to unify the country, tone down the hateful rhetoric around politicians and they're already at it again. Kamala Harris releasing an ad calling Trump an existential threat again and her words do have an impact as we have seen. Let's watch. You know, it's interesting. I never took it seriously until now because people believe things when they hear it over and over. Biden gets up. He can't uh, read two sentences. He can't put two sentences together. Trump is a threat to democracy. He's a he doesn't even know what the hell he's saying. He couldn't even define the word democracy. Steve, your reaction. 
<laughs> That's exactly right. I mean, it's, it's laughable because it's so ridiculous. It reminds me of one of the, the most insane things I've heard in a, a, amongst a lot of a, insanity over the last few years. Liz Cheney, right? Liz Cheney, who, like, whatever you think of her, she's not a stupid person, right? I saw her on, I think it was Meet the Press or one of these shows, saying that if Trump is re-elected, um, it could be the last free elections in America. And you think, what is going on in the mind of that person, as is in the minds of these Democrats, pushing this absolute nonsense? What are you talking about, existential threat to democracy? It is so ludicrous, but it shows you that actually they have no real arguments. They can't engage on real issues, on economic policy, on the border, or anything else, because it's just this, this ridiculous propaganda is what they fall back on. But to Trump's point, it is true. I mean, you look at the language on climate change, for example, same kind of things, terrifying people with, you know, the world's going to end in 12 years, existential threat to the planet. And exactly as Trump says, people are yeah. believing it to the extent of saying, well, now I can't even have children now because of the planet's going to end if I have babies. Right. I mean, it is so ridiculous, but we've got to take it seriously. Dana, it's been less than two weeks since Donald Trump was shot on national television. For half a second, people were like, oh, let's all tone it down. That seems to be over. Yeah, it happened a lot sooner, I think, than we all anticipated that it would. Uh, we, I mean, I, I don't know. We've heard this guy so many times when the left says, oh, maybe we should tone down rhetoric. I really don't think that they want to tone it down because the left, they're not the side that really has anything to fear. Uh, the bullets have only been flying really one way. Let's look at who was trying to assassinate congressional members on a ball field, who's been raising towns all across the United States during riots throughout multiple summers. So the violence and the, the assault the harassment, the bullets, everything else has only been coming really kind of one way when you look at this. And so uh, I don't know if they really take themselves seriously when they say that. But at the same time, who do they think they're trying to convince? We're in an election cycle and they keep going back to this well that choosing anyone but Democrats is an existential threat to the democracy that right. we can't even uphold in our own primary because we don't allow people to select the nominee. <laughs> we allow the Democrat Party elites and their superdelegates to do it, which I find incredibly ironic. I mean, it, do Democrats understand their process? Did they realize that they just disenfranchised a whole bunch of, of primary voters and they just threw them to the side, kind of like they did in 2016 with Clinton and Sanders, but that's a whole other story. Yeah. So I don't take them seriously. It's kind of sad. And I just think that they're going to I think they're going to radicalize moderates to the right. There are a lot of people, Jackie and Guy, I'm sure you've heard about this, that, you know, there are a lot of people out there, they think they're moderates, and then they hear what the left is saying, and they kind of think, well, the right, they sound sane. Yeah, it's too much for them. Dana, I couldn't have said that better myself. Steve, Dana, thank you so much for being here.